guys, we are Hannah and Nathan. And this is our self-built caddy camper van, Claudia. And in this video, we'll be showing you around our realistic, updated van tour. And just to give you guys a heads up now, everything that we discuss in our van tour video will be linked in the description below. To any of you who don't already know Claudia, she is a Volkswagen Caddy Maxi and when we brought her in November 2020, she was a bog standard ex-British Gas works van. Hence her colour. We soon got straight in there with our ideas and imagination to bring her to life. It took us around three and a half months in total to get her camper van ready and it was during lockdown number two where her transformation started. From the seriousness of insulating the walls, ceiling and floor of a hollow empty shell to the exciting fun of making her look cosy and inviting we went through it all to get her camper van ready. Instead of going through all of that again right now, you can find our van build conversion video and our first van tour video on our channel under our Claudia the Caddy Camper playlist. But since then, we have road tripped thousands of miles around England, Scotland and Wales, meaning that we have really put her to the test. Trust us when we say there's been massive highs and massive lows. The past year of van life adventures has given us a totally new perspective on travel. Put it this way, if you know, you know. Yes, yes van lifers! Don't forget that you can find our 2021 adventures with Claudia on our YouTube channel or to keep up live, follow us on Instagram at Claudia the Caddy. Okay, enough rambling now. This is our updated realistic van tour. So let's open the doors and jump right in. Okay, starting with our bench bed, which we absolutely love. We get on really well with this bed. Um, we found it a lot better than the rock and roll bed that we had in our higher caddy uh, when we did our North Coast 500 road trip. Um, there just seems to be a lot more space. You know, we've got so much space in these cupboards underneath. I do vice just in there. We also have this cupboard the other side, plenty of space under there as well. And also when the bed's down, when this bit's pulled out, you can also put your bags and things under there. So yeah, that's another space saver as well. Thing that we've done as well with the bed during our refurb, um, we painted it all up again. So it's just nice and fresh because you'd really be surprised at how scuffed it got through a year of van life adventures. The bed as well is easy enough to put down and it's easy enough to put away. It doesn't really take long at all. Um, yeah, we find it super easy. Ta -da! So the mattresses are a big part of the bed as well. And we didn't really know what to do with those about covering them. We didn't know whether to get them upholstered properly or we just had no idea really. Um, but I just came up with this idea of using two flat bed sheets. So a flat bed sheet for one side, a flat bed sheet for this side and I got some giant safety pins and just basically wrapped the flat bed sheets onto the mattresses like you would a present and pinned it round and that's worked really well for us because it's been really easy just to take the sheets off wash them and then put them back on as well so yeah i'd highly recommend if anyone's struggling with ideas for their mattresses and they're not sure whether to get them upholstered or what to do with them uh, the flat bed sheet uh, works really well it's a top tip from us that is so like i was saying um that we chose this bench bed because we had the rock and roll bed when we had our higher caddy when we did our nc 500 road trip um, the one thing about the rock and roll bed is, you know, you can't just chill out comfortably like this. Also, um, we had to strap our luggage to the rock and roll bed seat so that it didn't sort of fly everywhere. You couldn't just tuck it under the bed like how you could here. Yeah, so if you are thinking rock and roll bed, bench bed, definitely would recommend going for this bench bed. Another thing as well that we found super helpful during our past year of life on the road are our space saver cushions where we keep our clothes. Um, the zips kept breaking originally, so Nath fitted some Velcro onto the opening bit. So just to open them, open up with the Velcro and they close with the Velcro, easy enough. And they also look really pretty as well as being a space saver. So another thing about the bed, uh, a lot of people do ask is how do you have any room in there? 
um basically when we sat down on top of the bed we've still got you know the headroom's fine and nice a little genius as well as building a cooker drawer this is also where his feet go so when the bed's down um that's knife side so just the bit of overhang for his feet just goes on the cooker drawer so our cupboard totally hand built and we've put a fresh coat of paint on for the refurb yeah, it's pretty cool this because uh, when we built the van we wanted it for storage we've got this nice slab of oak on top which is fitted to gas struts which hold it up super convenient when the bed's pulled out that's a good tip that is and inside we've got non-slip matting to keep everything quiet yeah so we've got a big variety in here this is hannah's section i don't really go here it's all neat and tidy and my section we saw our gas fuel lagoon blinds a little cooker all the bits and bobs that are useful like that but yeah hannah's section nice and tidy i stay away from so we've got these push catch locks fitted just so the doors don't open while we're driving along absolutely brilliant and on this side of the cupboard we've got a nice homely touch this was hannah's idea and we did bicker about this but in the end we went with it and now i like it just some tea towel holders So a lot of people ask us about electrics, what we do for charging our phones and whatever. We have a split charge system on the van, we didn't fit this, uh, but we've got a leisure battery here, which obviously charges up as we drive along, and then there's a fuse board down there connected to the leisure battery. So the first thing we had fitted to our leisure battery was these six LED lights, they're on a switch in the cab, absolutely fantastic. And we've had the sockets scattered around here, these are brilliant because obviously we've got the worktop. Uh, we did think, oh, we'll have USBs right by where we sleep. Fantastic idea. It's all right, but the trouble is when you're sleeping and the wires are in here, you keep pulling them out. So we fitted two more USBs down the front and we'll go there now. Hello. So it's a little bit of a mess down here, but we've got a cigarette port here. This is for our fridge and the two USB ports. Brilliant these are because we put the phones, GoPro, whatever on there. And we can also use them in the cab. We fitted this inverter. It's just a, just a Halfords one. We fitted it under here into a socket and it's connected to a switch. Brilliant. Uh, we charged a drone last night. It took about an hour and 15 minutes, the same as it is at home. And we just use this for the camera, the laptop and the drone. Fantastic. And this is our little setup. We've got our switch here to this cigarette socket, which powers our inverter. We have our double USB here, linked up to our 12 volt here, which powers our fridge. And the last thing we have connected is a diesel heater, which is just under here and the control panels up there. Uh, brilliant as well. We've just been off grid for two days and it hasn't worn the battery out yet so it still needs tidying up a little bit but yeah this is where our ducting is for our diesel heater uh, it's fairly new so we've just got to mount it back up we had the opportunity a mate of mine come and help me fit it because he knew what he was doing so cheers mark thanks mark you did a great job yeah keeping it nice and cozy and yeah we've got our remote up here but also we can control the diesel heater by this little remote here and as you can see it's 14 degrees and it tells us everything what's going on pump glow plug fan whatever obviously it's switched off now so when my foots aren't on here we keep our 28 litre cool box uh, i've fitted this baton which most of the time stops it from falling over but as you can see it does fall over that's the reality of having a cool box in the van yeah it's a bit scuffed from the times when we've gone around some sharp corners You've gone around some sharp corners. Mm. The shelf is another thing as well up here. We had the bulkhead removed so we could have access to the shelf. And I thought this is going to be amazing. I can put so many things up there. I'll have my half, knife will have his half. Turns out it, that's all knives. He's got coats up there, a body warmer, fleeces. And uh, yeah, I don't get a look in without a cab shelf. <laughs> Well, that's me told. So, this next section, as we come out of the van, I'll leave to Hannah, because I know it's her pride and joy. Who needs all the essentials when really all you need is this games room? 
game shelf. We've got every game that we absolutely love on here. Um, we've had so much fun, haven't we, on our uh, little van life trips um, playing these games. So, yeah, if you've got a caddy and you don't really know how to make space of these door cards, uh, we found this really quirky and cool. So on to the next bit, we are outside the van for nice genius idea of the pull out cooker drawer which he's very proud of and I'm really proud of you for it as well. Thank you. So we remember that bit of wasted space at the end of the bed. Well this is what we've got. And it's been modified and now we have a fixed leg. Just to give us that bit of stability. Look at you, being all clever. Yeah, we cook some banging meals on here. Curries, chilies, pasta, toast. Toast, we've cooked toasties. So the bit of cupboard that's my side, that's messy, that's our gas bottle we store. Oh, obviously it's a bit of a faff having to set this up now and then. That's why we've got the little cooker. But what's different with this cooker? It did work well, but it could have been better. So we went back to the drawing board. We've fitted two sets of runners, top and bottom, just to give it that bit more sturdiness. And we've got rid of the old plate tray that was underneath. So it's just this, which has given us a space to fit our uh, leg. And this is brilliant because this, just takes all the weight off the runners and gives us that more stability. Besides we, I haven't really had a say in this. Uh, yeah, but this is my creation. That's what I mean, like, so it's, you your, had the it's your creation, it's you your had creation. The curtains. I had this little bit of wasted space. Yeah, he's very good. For convenience, we do have one extra camping stove. This comes in handy for coffee stops and an extra hob when we are cooking. So, our driveway awning, a popular subject. Yeah, our pull out awning, we cannot recommend highly enough. It's been fabulous, you know, because in England, Scotland and Wales on our road trips, we have had a lot of rain and it just keeps you sheltered from the rain and because we've had it on the same side as our cooker drawer as well, it pulls out over our cooker drawer for when we're cooking. So that's really handy. And also, believe it or not, we have had glorious weather as well on our UK road trips. So it's nice just to pull that out and it keeps you a bit shaded from the sun. It just takes some of the pressure off and it's nice just to chill out under there on our camping chairs with a nice glass of wine and a beer for nice. Yeah, yeah, the key information, it's direct 4x4, that's the make. And uh, we have the two metres by two metres in grey. Yeah, we will link that in the description below for you as well. Talking of awnings, we do have a drive-away awning. We won't go too much in depth as this was covered more on the other van tour. It's good if you're staying on a campsite for two to three, maybe more nights, but we've started to not use it that much because it, it is a bit of a faff. Yeah, it is a bit of a faff, especially when it's raining because we found when we have used it and we've put it away wet, it's hard to dry, isn't it? Yeah, we have to then put it back up at home, air it out. It's, it's, we've got it up there just in case, but yeah, we don't use it that much. Yeah, like Nice says, it is good for the summer because you know, you can just pop things in there if you want to pop out from the campsite. Uh, it's just easy enough to pop all your camping chairs and things in there and get changed in there, save getting dressed in Claudia. But it's not the be all and end all, we have managed without the drive away awning. Right, back to Claudia, and obviously the first thing connected to our roof bars is our awning. And now just connected by an L shaped bracket. Pretty easy to fit, but I did have to drill four holes in each bracket into the roof bar, but as you can see, it's pretty solid, it's holding my weight. And then the next thing is our Mary Poppins roof box. Yeah, absolutely brilliant the amount of stuff we've got in here. We've got umbrellas, chairs, our drive away awning, tables, much more. Uh, but yeah, it does throw us past 2.2 meters, which does mean that we do get a bit stuck when it comes to height barriers. And over on the other side, we have a little bit of space left, which is very good because I can transfer my full free ride mountain bike carriers over. So I've got one 
that I can put on there it just takes 10 minutes to fit if that and the other thing is brilliant it's two L-shaped brackets again that doesn't take long to fit uh, put them on and I can slide the paddle board in so we don't have to keep deflating and inflating and it did not budge we had two ratchet straps and we chucked a third over all around Cornwall and the thing didn't move they're absolutely fantastic we'll put a link to that in the description because they are one of the best modifications we've added since we did the last van tour so our sliding door windows and our barn door windows they are slightly tinted um, it just makes it feel that bit more private talking about the sliding windows as well it just feels more open than if it was all just boarded off uh, it does feel more open plus this does help with ventilation i'm not going to lie and say it never gets condensated because depending on the weather it does get condensated i don't think you can really get out of that um but it's not really been an issue for us has it the condensation but we do get a lot of questions about condensation and on the grounds of condensation our walls we have a vapor barrier recycled bottle plastic and then thermo wrap and then obviously the ploy board's gone back on we've got this stone carpet everywhere just to keep everything sort of insulated it, it's nice and toasty and the roof and the floor is just thermo wrap uh how does it work well this morning it was minus two outside and before we put the diesel heater on it was eight degrees in here so it is sort of working i don't know whether that's good or or not yeah, like Knife said about the insulation, at the time it feels relentless, you know, but it's definitely worth doing um, because, yeah, it was minus two outside this morning, but we was nice and warm in here. And I think because it's a small space as well, it holds the heat. But yeah, the insulation, you can't see it, but you can definitely feel the difference. So our decorative curtains that we have just here, uh, we was quite worried about these actually because we thought, oh, are they gonna, is the tension rod gonna come down when we're driving? But it actually hasn't, like they've stayed pretty sturdy. The only time that the tension rod has come down when uh, Nath tried to hang a towel over it before we had our fuel lagoon blinds uh, arrive uh, during our, van, our first van tour, that tension rod come down the first night we stayed in Claudia, so we thought, yeah, that's it, it's gonna be an absolute nightmare. But what happened yesterday morning? But apart from that and yesterday morning, when I accidentally pulled the tension rod down, yeah, uh, they've so. been fine. <laughs> and for the windows, we have these Vanex curtains, nice and tidy, and they just slide across. They're actually really good, like full blackout. And in the cab, obviously, we've got the fuel lagoon blinds, as Hannah demonstrated. So when we're off grid, we think we finally come up with the best shower solution for the van. It took a lot of thinking, very unique, very small, with baby wipes. Fragrance too. And so this is the makeup situation when van life in. Let's sort this out. Voila! So yeah, just in the cab, we spend a lot of time in Claudia driving about because we do use her as our everyday ride. Just because she's the small, isn't she? Like she's a small micro camper, so we can just use her as and when we need. It's not like having a big, big massive van or motorhome where it's you know you struggle to park and things like that. Yeah, it's just like driving a car, isn't it? And we do manage to park up in some pretty uh, good places that you won't get anything much bigger in. That's it, so on that side, that's like a positive for us. We can park, you know, we can park Claudia Anywhere. in. Yeah, we can park her really easily. Unless you're on a beach in Cornwall after 8 p.m., but yeah, we won't go there. Yeah, they, they do not like that, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like I say about Claudia being small, um, we're okay with not having the headroom in the back, but if you are looking to buy a micro camper, you've got to be okay with not having the headroom in the back, not being able to stand up. Seating's fine, isn't it? We can sit down okay with, and our heads aren't touching the roof, but you can't stand up. And also when the bed is out as well, um, we have to take it in turns to get dressed and things like that, don't we? 
Yeah, but like I say, we we don't find it an issue. Someone else might, but but we don't. But it is it is a a downside of owning a smaller van. That's it. The the upside is you can drive it anywhere and park anywhere. But then yeah, the downside is just that you can't stand up in it. So it's just what you know what suits you best, really. So yeah, don't let this realistic van tour fool you into thinking that it looks like this all the time because it doesn't. There is times when there's luggage everywhere, when there's all of our rubbish everywhere. Yeah, it's not like this all the time, is it? No, definitely not. This is especially for you. Another downside when you get distracted by the views. Right, time to go. Oh, my shoes. Oh, knife. Do you mind getting my shoes, please? I can't open the barn doors to get them. Oh, thank you. So, guys, that's a wrap. That's a realistic van tour done and dusted. Yeah, we wanted to put this video together because obviously we'd done the van tour last year. Uh, we'd rented a couple of camper vans, we thought we knew what we were doing. I think we did a pretty good job, but as you start using it, there's a few tweaks, what works, what doesn't work. We packed a lot of stuff that we've now got rid of that we don't use. And it's not perfect, no one's van, I don't think, will ever be perfect, but it's close for what we want to use it for. Yeah, you know, it works for us and if we can share some of our tips that we've learned this past year with you van lifers or if you're thinking about getting a van, yeah, we just hope it helps you. And you know, if you're thinking, oh, you're watching this video, you're thinking, oh, do I get a van, don't I get a van? If your heart is telling you to get a camper van, go and get the camper van. You know, what's the worst that can happen? The clutch can go on you like it did with us, <laughs> you know? That was, yeah, that's another story, but we're still here, yeah. you know, it, it's fine, like we've had more highs than lows, there's going to be bumps in the road, but van life this past year has just given us so many new adventures and happy memories together and it's just been so good, hasn't it? It has, yeah, yeah. And don't let people tell you otherwise, don't let people say, oh, well, I'd have to have a van that you have to walk in or I've got to have a fixed bed. Like, we don't drive around in a luxurious sprint or a big motorhome, we've got a tiny little it's good enough for us it, the main thing is it gets us out like january we're out camping and that's the main thing it doesn't matter what sort of van you've got just enjoy it so thanks again guys for watching our van tour video we hope you enjoyed it yeah cheers guys yeah we'll see you next time yeah in the summer she's my everyday ride but in the winter we use her sister wonder don't we yeah. she's a facade It, it is a bit of a faff. Yeah, it is a bit of faff. Warning voiceover, take 90. <laughs> With the sliding windows as well, it does just give us that much uh, more a bit. So, Claudia is our everyday ride, so we just thought it just makes sense to be in the cab for this bit because we drive her a lot, don't we? Yeah, yes, yeah, everyday ride. Uh I do not like that, do they? No. <laughs> <laughs>